Today's video is sponsored by Hero Forge, but a little bit more about them later in the video. It's, it's tabletop, tabletop time. time. I'm Jen. I'm Murray. And I'm Dave. And today we are doing the final piece of the cathedral. We are building the board and putting everything together. One of the first videos we did when we bought back tabletop time was building the cathedral. I came up with a whole design that I wanted to do and I wanted to base it in an autumn theme. Moving on to the next project, we made some awesome stained glass windows with our 3D printer. After that, we moved on to adding some plant life. I made my own ivy and wrapped it around the cathedral to give it a bit more life. The last project I did was making my own graffiti, another project I was really happy with, and I think it gives it a lot of life. And we can announce here that after our Age of Sigma Battle Report comes out, the next project is actually going to be Alpha Legion aligned trainer guard fighting Jen's sister's kill team that we've seen on the channel. It's going to be an awesome kill team, and it's going to be on this board that we make today. Sounds great. I didn't know that either. How exciting! <laughs> <laughs> so I've got two more pieces of the cathedral that I need painted up. I've got a couple of other spare bits and pieces that if you have been following our videos, you'll know what they are. Otherwise, there'll be a pretty big surprise for later on. But I'm going to get Murray to paint all of those up for me. All right, see you later. <laughs> all right, so what am I doing, Jen? So you and I are going to be building the board together. All right, let's get down to it. Let's get down to business. So one of the first things we realized was that the board and the cathedral would be slightly wider than the foam that we currently have. We don't want to extend the sides of this board, so the only way to make the cathedral fit would be to build up to it. Having the cathedral on a platform actually works in our favor. It lets us know how big the actual kill team board is, and it means it's easier to play on. So I went and grabbed some foam off cuts and attempted to use some giant skewers to adhere them to the model. These skewers proved to be too big, so I got some high strength steel wire and use this instead. So for the upper area that would be the trim the cathedral is sitting on, I just focused on using the hot wire cutter in a wavy pattern to create a rough rock surface texture that we can paint later. Now we do have the consideration of making this board a playable kill team board that models can be used on really easily, but I did want to put two large craters evenly spaced in the play area just to showcase what had happened to this place to lead it to be the ruin that it is today. So now it's time to glue our building onto the foam board. But to do that, we're going to need two more pieces. I wonder if Murray's finished working on them. Maybe we'll go find out. Murray! <laughs> we have a Murray. <sighs> Bits. Okay. They're not painted. I'm sorry, I'm not fast enough. All right, so now we will set about positioning these all around the board and gluing them down. But we'll leave off these last two pieces until I finish painting them. sponsored by our good friends at Hero Forge. And if you haven't heard about them before, well, let me tell you a little bit about them. Hero Forge is an awesome online tool that you can use to create your own special minis in whatever style you like. You can create awesome creatures and characters that all fit into your D&D or tabletop setting. There are quite literally thousands of parts with more being added every month on Hero Forge. And they have an amazing posing system allowing you to create the perfect custom pose for your character model. They have loads of different types of clothing options and armor as well. There is always something new to come back to on Hero Forge. I've used it multiple times and was excited to see that they've now separated clothes into inner and outer wear, allowing you to mix and match your jackets and t-shirts, as well as your pants, leggings, belts, etc. One of my absolute favorite features of Hero Forge is being able to customize the color on your minis. This means I can test out my paint scheme before I even have to pick up a paintbrush. Or if you're planning on using these models on virtual tabletop, which is one of the new purchase options on Hero Forge, these colors will be baked into your model. Hero Forge also provides different options
options for you to purchase your minis. You can grab them as an STL or even purchase a physical copy that gets delivered right to your door. And if you love Hero Forge as much as we do, perhaps you could consider the Hero Forge Pro subscription or the Pro Plus subscription. Getting early beta access to multiple items as well as free STL downloads every month and a curated pack of design minis fit to a particular theme every month as well. Hero Forge is constantly updating their website with new content for you guys to enjoy. So why not consider checking them out below? All right, so let's print these out and we can paint them up ready for our cathedral. Let's do it. Alrighty, I am finally done gluing everything down and hopefully it does not budge. Now I'm going to put some textures on the board to make it come a bit more alive before we start painting it. The first thing I'm going to do is put down some plastic card. I've got some tiles here that I think will look really good. So I'm going to cut these up into smaller pieces and scatter it around the board and then I can put some texture on top of it so it looks like the floor is meant to be tiled but all this rubble has come over. It's time to start weathering up some of the board. There are a few areas that are a bit too clean. I need to mess them up a bit. Then we're just going around and giving it a bit of texture with some knife work. I am all done texturing up this board. Murray, what have you been doing? I've got some pews for you. Ooh. Oh, oh my God. The plan now is to put sculptor mold on and mix it with some pigments to save a bunch of time so we don't actually need to paint the base coat of the earth. Correct. So what color are you thinking? Brown, believe it or not. So what we can do is place the pews and then kind of use the sculptor mold to secure them in place as well. Sound like a plan? That does sound like a plan. Yep, let's do it. Transition. Oh. What was your thing? <laughs> I was high-fiving, but oh. you guys didn't. Go again. <laughs> Wow. 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 day and we've let this dry overnight and it's pretty much good to go ready to work with we need a couple more things to get done to this board before we can start painting it do you have any ideas i'm going to fill in some of the corners with just a bit more rubble make it look like all these ruined buildings have crumbled in those areas then i might start touching up some of the areas with a little bit of paint just so we can start yep. actually highlighting and putting some proper work into it awesome and i've got some hero forge models to work on they need a bit of cutting and priming before we can put them on the board so i'm gonna go ahead and do that and I'm gonna leave you to it. Sweet, awesome. all right. Yay. So for this build, I definitely wanted to try and include some people into the scenery. I decided I wanted to create some sort of churchy, cultist sort of style characters. Ones that kind of represent the people that would have come to this church before it got completely destroyed, but still remain because it's part of their life. I also wanted them to look pretty bare bones, nothing too special. These guys have had a pretty hard time and they come back just to pray that someone will come and save them. <laughs> hand looks like something that came straight from Necromunda. He's a straight up gangster dude with a skull mask and a mohawk and he looks totally rad. Definitely fits within the 40k universe and definitely looks like he comes from Necromunda. I can already picture the scene with these guys in it. You've got the peasants that are praying and this Necromunda dude is about to come mess their day up. And now that they were all done it was time to get back to the board and start finishing things off. Done! Awesome! All right we have our little cool dudes. We've got our cultists and our priests to put in our cathedral. Mm -hmm. They're super cool. I love that. Look at him just sparing over the destruction. He's, yeah. The sculptor mold is dry. The basing texture is dry. It's time to paint all the ground coverage before we flock it and put some trees on it. Yep. In the building area, we'll kind of keep like a gray or stone dark masonry rubble. And then moving out here, we can go to more dirt with path. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. Sound yep. good? Sounds good. Awesome. Montage time. Oh, <laughs> Thank you. 
So we have these tile patches all over the board and they're a really great opportunity for a spot of contrast and color. And I really like the idea of painting them in a marble fashion. Recently, I'd seen an awesome video by Eric's Hobby Workshop where he showed off this marbling technique using disposable wipes and stretching out the fibers and then spraying through that with an airbrush to get the nice spider webbed effect of marble. I think this is a really awesome technique and it's one I'd love to play with more. This is my absolute first time doing it and I can see all the issues as to why it could be done a whole lot better. But I imagine this is also one of those things where practice and time makes perfect. But for a terrain build, we're gonna be able to persevere and I think this one's gonna turn out pretty good at the end regardless of it not being a flawless finish. While the airbrushing through the cleaning cloth wasn't as crisp as we might have liked, I got the Seraphim Sepia and ran it in diagonal strokes over the marble effect, giving a really nice color shift and fighting against the webbing that we'd already done. I really like this effect and I think it's starting to come together. But what will really set this apart is once we come in with a few highlight lines just to make that marble pop. It is the next day and we have let everything dry and we're ready to keep going with the cathedral. So Murray, what are we doing today? The tiles and rubble are looking a little bit, uh, a bit samey. So I'm going to add a little bit of texture and variance and you are going to... Do a whole lot of flocking. So we're going to put some grass on this board, give it a bit of life. And I think we'll add some trees and just little bits and pieces as well, just to fully finish it off. Nice, get that nice autumn feel. It's going to be a lot of work, but we're going to get it done. Go team. I'm ready. <laughs> so adding a bit of depth and colour around the cathedral through the rocks that are just sort of the same monotonous grey at the moment. I use contrast paints or an airbrush as that would give me a nice gradation through colours and also give that really nice colourful pop. I used a fairly strong green and a nice rusty brown. I apply these predominantly around the corners to give the centre of the cathedral more interest and pop and then just introduce some colours here and there to give it more variance. So it was time to put down the flock on this board and I had a general idea of what colours I wanted to use. For the front of the board where there would be a lot of life and greenery, I definitely wanted to make it look more alive than the back of the board where autumn was clearly coming in. I decided to use a mixture of hay coloured grass along with a bit of green, mix those two together and put them in the static grass applicator and sprinkled them on the board. Focusing more on the edges of the board and where we would possibly be putting trees in later. And as usual, most of my modelling pieces, I love using plants to bring a little bit of life into dedicated areas. So in this case, I wanted to put a couple of laser cut plants at the front of the cathedral and just a couple of tufts of grass at the very back. So after I had toiled away punching out all these tiny little leaves of different autumn colours, I then sprayed down some of the woodland scenic trees that we have in the autumn variety and just sort of sprinkled them on just to give the illusion that there were leaves falling down off the trees. Then once those are dry, I had to work out where we wanted trees to go. I chose a few very strategic locations, punched little holes in to mark where they went and then sprinkled a healthy amount of leaves around the base to show where the foliage had fallen. Because the cathedral is so broken and open, I definitely wanted the autumn theme to be coming through the board, like it's being swept through by a big gust of wind. The first thing we did was decided the direction the wind would be going and then we sprayed down a massive amount of water and PVA glue so that the clumpage would stick to the terrain. We sprinkled this on pretty generously, keeping in mind the areas where it would be most impacted. And we came up with the ingenious technique of blowing leaves literally into the corners to recreate the actual wind. I'm not gonna lie, this is actually probably my favorite part of this board. It just completely brings it to life. And it was kind of fun to play with these tiny little miniature leaves. And then it was time for the finishing touches to this board. Now we had a couple of items that we were gonna put in and originally I was gonna glue these in, but I thought that it would be better if these were movable terrain. It makes the board more dynamic and we can put these wherever we want. So for now, I'm just gonna leave these in, but we can move these later on when we play our Kill Team match. And then Jen went to town, adding in all the little scrolls and books that Amy had also made for us. These look amazing. They add so much to this. And with this long-term project finally done, here are the final results of all our hard work.
good. You guys have done an amazing job finishing it up. Yeah, this has really been a labor of love for at least everyone around the studio at some point. I think it was done a really amazing job and I couldn't be prouder of yeah. what we've accomplished. The clock gives it so much life and character. It's brilliant, looks amazing, piled up in the corners. We'd love to thank all our amazing Patreons for all your support, which allows us to take on these awesome projects and put out two videos a week. So this is super cool and a really big thank you to all of you. A big thank you to Hero Forge for being the sponsor of this video. Your models made it come to life and gave it an extra story to tell. And of course, a big thank you to to miniature scenery for sending us this amazing cathedral kit. My favourite part is just it's got to be the stained glass windows. I'm so proud of that project and I think that whenever you have a light in front of those windows it's just mwah, it's absolute magic. For me it has to be the flock. I keep mentioning it. It, it looks amazing. It just adds so much. I really love the combination of elements on the base, but I actually think that the way that you've modeled and added all these colors just subtly into the dirt in the middle of the ruin, combined with the flock and the way it flows into the graffiti. In fact, you know what? The graffiti is a surprise little, I love it. It really brings so much character to the elements of the cathedral. So yeah, thank you again to everyone and we hope you love this board as much as we do. Um, but I'm going to now uh, take this home. No, yep. because we have to play a kill team game on oh, it. Oh, you're true. So I'm really looking forward to making my Chaos Renegade Guard kill team to fight your sisters of battle yeah. on this board. It's going to be a lot of fun and I'm super hyped for it. And that will be before anything we do with the Stormbird kill team because of course that project is still underway. So get hyped for more battle reports. Woo!